Having your mouth sewed to someone's anus is the last thing any of us want. In this video, I'm going to go through the events that unfold in Human Centipede 2 Full Sequence. The goal is to identify the mistakes made by the characters and how to overcome them. By doing this, we can gain vital knowledge on survivability for these unfortunate scenarios. Scenes involving threats or high-risk situations will be analysed in order to make better decisions than the ones made in order to stay alive and beat the deranged copycat. This film begins with our antagonist Martin, a mentally challenged individual working as a security guard in a parking garage. His hobbies include enjoying movies, spending time with his mother and keeping pets. Seems normal. Well, not exactly. Martin enjoys his movies a little too much, and that movie happens to be the first human centipede, which he gets off to, with sandpaper, while at work. As he is enjoying the Oscar-nominated first film, Martin notices a couple through the CCTV camera. We can assume they have just enjoyed a night out of drinking due to how loud they are. Martin sees this as a treacherous crime and decides to put the sandpaper down and confront them. The male teen decides to brutally roast Martin with insults, to which Martin responds by brutally roasting a bullet hole through his feet and bashing his head in. Oh, also the girlfriend gets it as well because Martin is a firm believer of a Rico charge. Okay, how could this have been avoided? Being loud after a night out in an empty parking lot isn't strange, however, it would be best not to as you never know who could be lurking at this time of the night. This could be a robber or someone with far more evil intentions. Despite this, let's take a look at how the couple could have avoided this fate when Martin approaches them. Here, he should have been nice. I'm just kidding, he probably would have done it anyway. But insulting someone for doing their job definitely isn't the right way to go about this. Instead, he should have maintained distance and made his way to the car without hurling insults. If Martin still pulls out his gun, which on average can be done in 0.25 seconds according to the lexapol, then there's not much this man can do but try to close the distance and disarm him, but this is very unlikely to work, especially if he is intoxicated. The girl, on the other hand, could attempt to overpower Martin while her boyfriend is being bashed in. This is because Martin is small, unathletic, asthmatic and preoccupied, which evens out the playing field. However, this is once again unlikely due to stress and intoxication. The best option for her would be to run for help while her boyfriend is being bashed in. She can use the barriers and cars as covers and hope Martin has bad aim when he decides to go for her after finishing the boyfriend. At this point, she should have gained significant distance. The assumption that he has bad aim is justified as firearms cannot be legally acquired in the UK thus firing ranges don't exist. Martin wouldn't be able to practice his shot and this is an important piece of information to keep in mind. Unfortunately, these two end up in a trunk along with another person who seems to have been offed before the movie even started. This proves that this isn't Martin's first victims, and this is a scary thought. He is also far from done. Martin kidnaps another man he sees through the camera, and it seems all is going as planned. He decides to rent out a warehouse, and after being shown around by the landlord, he thanks him with a bullet to the stomach. Martin sobs over his dead body suggesting that he wanted this man to be a part of the centipede. Poor guy, I'm sure he's absolutely gutted. Anyway, this landlord clearly didn't do his due diligence on who he was renting to, which is vital especially in London. It wouldn't have been hard to find out more about Martin to prevent this. A quick and easy way to pre-screen potential tenants is over the phone or through email. By doing this, you can gather basic information such as their name, occupation and reason for moving. This can also include credit, reference and background checks. By doing this, it wouldn't be hard for something suspicious to come to surface. Martin doesn't seem the type to clean up after himself or go out of his way to remove his digital footprint. A further dive into Martin's past, we find out that his mental illness may have stemmed from when he was younger. This is because he was abused by his father, to which his mother blames him for as he is now in jail. Martin is also obese and asthmatic. His therapist also touches him up. Damn, sounds like I'm roasting him. On a serious note, this conveys the failure of social welfare and how his circumstances have failed him. In no way does this justify his actions, but this does raise concern about how this could have been prevented way earlier with the right support. These traumas typically cause a child to have low self-esteem, depression, and trouble forming and maintaining relationships. More contextual indicators include turning up to school with marks or bruises, being aggressive to other children, lack of attendance, and scavenging in bins for food. If teachers or social welfare workers identify these symptoms or have their suspicions, they must notify a welfare body immediately. In extreme cases, getting the police involved may also be an option. 
If not treated correctly, these traumas will be imprinted in a child and cause lifelong effects. Back at the parking lot, Martin spots more potential victims. The time frame isn't clear from when he kidnapped the first victim we see in the back of the van to the victims we see here. Assuming it is more than a day, it is quite concerning that further investigation hasn't been sparked due to the concern of family and friends of the people missing. Furthermore, London is one of the most surveillance-heavy cities in the world, so the last known location of all these people would be entering the parking lot. In fact, not only does London have the third most CCTV cameras per 1,000 people at 67.47 cameras, but if we were to remove China from the list, London would be the number one most surveillance-heavy city in the world. Just take a look at this list. Furthermore, security guards at these places tend to work in shifts, so the other guards may have stumbled along something left behind. Finding goo-covered sandpaper, along with blood in the garage, are all grounds to be suspicious. Following up by re-watching past surveillance footage would also give it away. Unfortunately, no one seems to have been alerted by these activities, and so Martin goes for these two victims. He shoots the driver through the window and approaches the car, which also has a pregnant mother and her child. Here, the mother could react quickly by throwing her child in the back seat and step on the reverse with her head down to gain distance. Best case scenario, she composes herself through the shop and drives out to look for help. Again, unlikely when taking into account the shock filling her with cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone which increases blood pressure, heart rate and muscle tension. Her freezing up in the moment is very much understandable, especially when she's with her child, so everyone, give her a break. Martin, however, does not give her a break and bashes her head in. This activity extended beyond Martin's athletic capabilities. He has an asthma attack, which goes to show overpowering Martin may be easier than it seems. Anyway, at least he spares this child though. I'm talking about this child here. This child in the stomach, well, I'll get onto that later. Oh god. The surviving child here won't be able to see his parents just yet though, but he will be seeing a therapist very soon. Anyway, after this has occurred, the film cuts to Martin enjoying the first film with sandpaper, but he's then caught by in the act by two women. They throw a fit and inevitably get added to the victim list. Okay, now we highly encourage all viewers to treat everyone with kindness and not judge a book by its cover. But if the cover of the book looks like this, then judge away and get out of there fast. This is no bash on the actor Lawrence Harvey, but rather the ominous demeanour that he displays in this film. If you see someone like this, enjoying himself to this, with this, then get out of there fast. Back at home, Martin's mother finds the scrapbook and to her disdain she destroys it. For this, Martin puts her face onto his pet centipede, then bludgeons her to death. I can't say I felt sorry for her, but this death could have been prevented. Earlier we see the mother attempting to unalive Martin. Had she successfully unalived him, then this could have been prevented. I am in no way encouraging the act of unaliving, but this would have saved a lot of trouble. After having dinner with his deceased mother at the dinner table, yes I actually said that, Martin politely invites his neighbour down for dinner. His neighbour insults his cooking and gets shot. There wasn't much this guy could have done. Unless he had knowledge that he was living above a mentally ill person who is usually quiet, he wouldn't have any other reason to suspect foul play. However, he could have decided to not enter the flat and make up an excuse, but alas, he joins the centipede. Back at work, Martin notices criminal activities through the cameras and decides to step in. He finds his doctor and another man indulging themselves with a prostitute. Unlike Batman, Martin brings justice by shooting two of them to keep for later and unalives his doctor, but what we assume is because he touches him up. Finally, his last victim is the actress from the first film, which he calls up pretending to be an agent for an upcoming Tarantino movie. Without any due diligence, she agrees to meet up with him and thus the recipe for his centipede is complete. Okay, this was stupid. As an actor or actress, you should have an agent or union that represents you on your behalf to organise these things. The agent would conduct the checks and it wouldn't be hard to find that this was a fake call. The agent would have access to channels that allow them to reach out to the necessary people within the network to check if it is legit. It was also stupid of her to go on her own after one phone call rather than ask for more information. She should also at least go with someone whether it's her agent or her friend. Anyway, back at the warehouse, it's not looking good for these people. They're bounded with their hands behind their back with duct tape and their knees have been shot out. While there are techniques to free themselves from duct tape, it may be a bit more difficult with the pain from having your knees shot out, and in a lot of cases, being bashed in the head. The pregnant lady appears to be dead, so Martin compromises with an 11-person centipede. After an outstanding surgical performance done without anesthesia, the woman at the front begins to scream. 
Fair enough, but at this point, please, that is the absolute last thing you should be doing, and instead you should be looking for opportunities to escape or attack Martin, which would require her ripping her poorly stapled anus off the back of another man's mouth, which we later see is possible. Instead, her screaming leads to her tongue being ripped out. Yeah, this could have been avoided. She should have counted her lucky stars that she was at the front and got to eat food rather than feces. After some time of Martin making them walk around and giving them laxatives so they feed each other, we find out that the pregnant lady isn't actually dead. She manages to escape through the door while her water is breaking, which shows that he never locked it after entering. The lady makes it to his car outside and locks it just in time as he is chasing her. Alright, you thought the movie was bad? Just wait until you hear this. I had to watch this with my own eyes, so please give this video a like if you want to see me suffer more. So, the lady manages to start the car while Martin is chasing her outside, and as she's about to drive, she gives birth. The child lands underneath the accelerator pedal and she steps on it like it's the F1, which crushes the newborn child. What the fuck? After this scene, I went to cleanse my eyes with holy water and swiftly made my way back to finish the movie. Back at the warehouse, someone manages to rip their mouth off someone else's anus, which enrages Martin, so he begins shooting everyone. The actress, who leads the other half of the broken centipede, manages to make it to the light switch to turn it off. After the lights come back on, she attacks him. First by throwing his centipede tank at him, then giving him a low blow. Rather than finishing him off, she inserts the centipede down his backside. Martin then kills the rest of the people, with her being the last to die. Okay. In this position, you are seriously traumatized even if you make it out alive. You would probably need therapy for the rest of your life, hopefully not by this guy. But when you're in this position, you need to finish the job. She could have grabbed his weapon or taken him around the neck, or even go for the eyes, but instead settles for this, which he probably likes as well. He probably enjoyed this. Anyway, the film ends with Martin back at his job watching the first film alive and well.